Here is a great comment that came in on hummingbirds, and I'm going to share my opinion on this with you. Grace in the Garden wrote, I noticed Saturday a mass decline in hummingbirds. I went out and took down two of the feeders and cleaned them up for next season. The remaining three I washed and put back outside. There were only two hummingbirds at dusk tonight. Never before have they left prior to mid-October in this area. Just in case there are a few here and there, I will continue to keep at least one feeder out until sometime in October. They arrive later this year and are leaving earlier. Thank you for all you do. Grace, that was a great comment because the same thing is going on here a little differently though. Your hummingbirds migrate and leave for the late fall into winter. Here, we have a lot of local residents, but we also have a lot of them that are migrating through. Now, about a week ago, I had more birds than I'd ever seen before. Thousands had come in. I could not walk out of the kitchen because as fast as I was filling all my feeders all over here and the ones in the garden, they were emptying them. That lasted for about three days. And then all of a sudden on the third day, I'm gonna say I had about half of whatever was here. I was going through four gallons, five gallons of homemade formula, which is a quarter of a cup of white granulated table sugar, plain old sugar, and one cup of water. But of course, I make about a half a gallon to a gallon at a time. Now, what was going on during that time is I was having birds migrating through here by the thousands, and they were stopping here. This was a pit stop on their way back to Mexico, Central America, maybe even South America, as far as these little ones go. We here in the United States have the smaller species of hummingbirds, where when you get into South America, they have a lot of hummingbirds. They're two and three times the size. They're much bigger. Our hummingbirds don't weigh too much more than a penny. But what they were doing was fueling up for the long trip. So they came here, found enough food and shelter that they could hang out here that in about three days, they can double their weight. This way they can continue their travels that they do for the winter and get to where they need to go where they're gonna have plenty of food, water, and shelter. There they'll have all the food they need, which is pollen and nectar and insects, and they'll hang out in the beautiful weather until the time is right for them to migrate up north again, which will be in about six months, let's say. It all depends on mother nature. They get the signal and they know where to go and when to go. Oh, don't ask me how they know that because that is nature's way. But that's what they're doing. Now, that's not to say that in the next few days, next week, you may have another wave come through, depending on in what direction they're going. Now, they don't migrate like geese do and other birds do, where they go in a formation and take off and all go where they're going. They migrate differently. Hummingbirds are very independent birds. They move on their own. They're not dependent on another bird. They're not relying on anybody else. Only what nature is telling them to do. It just so happens that huge numbers are all going in the same direction. So it looks like they're traveling together, but they're not traveling together. And if they find enough food, like here, we have dozens of feeders all over. As long as there's enough for everybody that keeps quarreling down, there's going to always be a little bit. There's going to be some bird that's going to decide he wants a feeder and, or he wants a certain seat. And he'll push some of the other birds over. But all in all, they have one thing on their mind, and that's to get where they need to go. They're not in a breeding mode right now. They're not looking for that. They're looking to shelter and live out the fall and winter until spring comes and then they start thinking about nesting the females and the males think about courting and going after females. That won't be for another six months or so. All they're looking for right now is survival. They need to feed every 15 minutes and they need to know where food is. And let me tell you something, 
They may be very tiny, but they remember things. They have a massive brain for the size of their body, and they know where they found food before. So even though they're fueling up here, they'll remember the stops they did before. And plus, while they're traveling, like I always tell you, they're gonna look down and go down to things that are familiar. They're not gonna just go into somebody's yard or patio or deck and look to see if everybody put something out because they would perish. They wouldn't be able to find any food if they can't find flowers and insects. But they're gonna look down and spot something that looks like a hummingbird feeder and something they've seen before and they will go and investigate on their travels down south. That's why I always say, if you wanna put out a fancy glass feeder with all kinds of decorative designs and everything, that's perfectly fine. But put out something alongside of it that's a common feeder that they would be used to seeing. Then they'll come down, they'll feed on that, and then while they're there and they're full, they'll investigate to see what else you've got. So all we can do is put the food out and help these guys. They do need our help because it's gonna be very difficult for them to find the amount of food that they need to consume. Remember, once a hummingbird goes and takes all the nectar out of a flower, it may not replenish for hours to have enough food for a hummingbird or any other pollinator because they're also looking for food. So that's why they've got to go through hundreds of flowers constantly just to see if they can find enough food to keep them going. At night, they go in a torpid state where their heart rate drops down to close to nothing. And that's when they go into a deep hibernation. But when they wake up in the morning, and it can take them almost up to an hour to warm up and wake up and go feed, then their heartbeat just speeds up so fast. And that's when they need a lot of food. So during the day, it is very important for them to have a constant supply of food. And that's what we can help them with for their journey. There's nothing wrong with us helping them as long as we do it right. And what they need is sucrose, and that's exactly what they find in flowers, which just so happens to be our white granulated table sugar. Again, no honey, no jam, no maple syrup or any of that. Just plain old table sugar, a quarter of a cup of white granulated sugar, and water, you can use tap water, if you can drink it, they can drink it too because on their adventures, they're going into the street to get water. They're going to sprinklers and gardens and looking for the water that's coming out of your household hoses. So it will be perfectly fine. You can add part of it as boiling or hot water to start to get the sugar to melt because you want it crystal clear and then top it with the cold water. This will help them survive. They have a very tough life and every day is a challenge to stay alive. So if we can help them, that's wonderful because guess what? They'll come back to visit our gardens, to visit our home and our feeders, and we'll get to enjoy them as much as they enjoy us. And Grace, keep those feeders out because another wave could come through, or the stragglers that waited a little longer, they'll be coming through too. With that, have a wonderful, wonderful day, and don't forget to eat what you grow. Okay, we don't grow sugar, so I have to buy that. Bye-bye.